Hello, brothers and sisters in YouTube family. Hope you guys are being blessed. It has been a whirlwind of trials and much suffering since the girls arrived. It wasn't what we expected, and we didn't receive it well with a cheerful disposition. First, one of the girls found herself frustrated and emotionally undone when her luggage didn't arrive with her. The airlines told her that they would deliver the next morning. However, two days had gone by and she was still getting the runaround from the airlines and delivery company. She had a feeling that this would happen as she'd even prayed for the Lord to protect her luggage because she knew she was attached to her things. However, we all know how Jesus works. That is the very thing he'll ask us to give up. I tried to encourage her to be patient and offer it to the Lord, but it was hard as we had to go to Walmart the following day to buy a few essentials as we were waiting for our luggage to arrive and didn't come until a week later. The one of the other girls was struggling with memories and prophetic words she felt she had got from the Lord as a child, which was bringing much confusion. She had been warned by the Lord before coming through Ramah's. One said, discern between good and bad spirits, test the spirit, which she got twice, and the second, a sheep without a shepherd is a vulnerable sheep. So upon her arriving, I thought maybe she had put those visions and memories at the Lord's feet, and trusting my discernment. As I, Mother Claire, and Father Ezekiel discerned, she wasn't hearing from the Lord. She would listen in the moment just to come back a few minutes later, refuting or questioning my discernment, and taking a lot of my time, not considering the needs of the other two, who needed time with me as well. Then two of the girls had an altercation over some butter, as the other one would sit quietly, not saying much. However, I knew something deep was going on in her as well. If I can be honest, I was beyond frustrated, irritated, and exhausted. And this was all in two days, guys. I kept thinking, Lord, how can I do it for a week with these ladies, who honestly seemed more like children, and more importantly, have them come to help in Ghana? I was having to deal with personalities, brokenness, and neediness, as I kept telling the Lord, I don't think I can do this. This is not at all what I expected. I know, guys, that is so selfish of me, but I'm just being honest with you. I was physically and emotionally exhausted. So on the third day in the morning, in prayer, I went to Blessed Mother's Tree to pray, as I realized I had asked for this. I had prayed for this. Lord, help me to love like you. And he had answered that request yet again, giving me these girls, as I recognized that I didn't know how to love like Christ as I thought I did. Here I was, getting frustrated, impatient, irritated, and critical of others, rather than being kind, gentle, and bearing with them patiently. It hit me that this was just as much of a test for them as it was for me. If I couldn't love these girls where they were at, then how could I be able to love the children? A while ago, the Lord had put the question in my heart that understanding and love go hand in hand. Many times we seek to be understood rather than understand, especially dealing with wounded souls. In our pride, we can become presumptuous, which almost always leads to judgment and impatience. We can't love something that we don't understand. As I told the Lord, please help me to understand all three of them. I know they were hurting in their own way and overwhelmed and sure about all of this, since so much happened in three days. As I said, Lord, I can't love them unless I understand where they're coming from. Please help me to understand. As I sighed deeply so weary in worship before him, the Lord answered my prayer. He gave me insight to the hiddenness of their soul, a grace I had never had before, but realized has now been given to me for this call, as the Lord reminded me again that I was indeed their mother. You see, that prayer came from St. Faustina Divine Mercy Diary, when she would pray for her spiritual directors for that grace, so they may steer her spiritually, according to the Lord's will, and know what is going on within her, even when she wasn't clear. So when I first came here, I read that and began to pray that for Mother Claire and Father Ezekiel. It's amazing how Mother Claire would give me wise counsel and know exactly what the Lord was doing with me when I bared my soul to her. She brought such clarity so many times as to what the Lord was asking of me. So when the Lord began to reveal their hearts to me, I was flabbergasted as he gave me a vision and insight to each girl as I cried and I cried and I cried. After repeating that prayer in my heart, I saw the first soul sitting down in a chair on the mountain listening to worship. And I felt everything she was feeling, the disappointments, the fear, lack of trust in the Lord, and the hope of a promise she felt was gone. 
I then understood the heart of the second soul, as I felt her fears, wounds of rejection, and the deep pain she has had to go through. And lastly, the third soul, who was sitting before the Lord in adoration, as she was heavily oppressed with spirits of confusion, beguiling spirits, here, but feeling so lost and tormented interiorly. I cried and I cried and cried as all of this came to me and I understood. I finally understood why they acted and reacted in certain ways and how they were all hurting in their own ways. Then Jesus began to speak to me. My beloved little one, I'm right here. I'm right here indeed. You are their mother. I've seen the anguish of your soul and your suffering, but I tell you, each of them have been suffering. You are all carrying a cross, although they may not seem heavy to one another. On your own, it is much for you all to bear, and I'm giving graces to each of you right now. I know the enemy has hit you with thoughts and wounds of the past that has made you fearful and even doubting what I'm doing at the present moment with you, for truly, when you become self-seeking, you cease to love. It becomes all about you and all that you're feeling. But a mother doesn't think that way, my little one. A mother carries the heart of her children, which I now gave you grace to feel. They too are hurting, doubting, questioning, and anxious about what's in store for them. They need your comfort, love, and reassurance, my beloved little one. I've given you insight to their hearts, but you cannot hear as I can. You cannot see as I can. I want to speak to them to encourage them. May I? As I responded, of course, Lord. And Jesus continued. Jesus to the first soul. My daughter, the firstborn, I've seen how you've waited for me and missed many temptations and many attacks even as a child that wanted to stop the destiny I had for you. But I am God. I am your dear spouse. Every desire that has bloomed in your heart, I've put there. You will be a mother to many souls, not just your children, as I have great things in store for you. Don't doubt my promises to you. I am the one who has kept you. I am the one who has hidden you for all this time, because I knew the enemy's plans for you. So every guy that has come and gone, every man who overlooked you, was by my doing, because I have a wonderful husband in store for you. You will not only have a blessed family, but a blessed marriage. Don't discount the small beginnings, for in your obedience lies my delight. And when you delight yourself in me, I give you your heart's desire, which becomes my perfect desire for you. I brought you here to detach you, remove you from your safety net that has been for so long a source of security and encouragement. But I want to be your all in all, your everything and source of everything, that you would find strong, quiet trust in me, fully relying on my hand, my ability, my grace, and providence to make a way for you. You will live to testify of my faithfulness. Trust me, there's much more to come. Jesus to the second soul. My beloved daughter, I know how you try so hard to love, try so hard to give, try so hard to smile, but it's okay not to be okay. I wanna deal with the deep wounds of your heart. My beloved, the reason you have been hurt so much is because you have my heart. You've always had my heart. Don't doubt any longer, but the enemy of your soul has brought many souls to you to wound you, reject you, hurt you. I allowed all these things, though they weren't my perfect will, but I will and have used it for your good. I wanted you to know how I feel when I'm rejected, how I feel when evil things are said about me, how I feel to be alone. When those who say they love me neglect me, my bride, do you see how you have so resembled me? You carry much condemnation that I have not placed on you, but the devils have. I have forgiven you of everything. I love you so tenderly. You are my little butterfly, whose wings will bring healing to so many. I want you to know you are free in me, my little one. You are free, free from condemnation, free from the bondage of sin, free to be who I created you to be, and free to love. Don't close yourself off like you've done in the past. No one here means ill will towards you. You are safe in me, and safe here, beloved. No one will hurt you. No, they will not reject you. So there's no need for you to reject yourself. For I've chosen you, accepted you, and so have they. Nothing you do will change my mind, my little one, or theirs as well. 
This is your family. These are your sisters, and she's your mother. Friction that will occur here, the enemy will magnify or remind you of past hurts. Don't allow it, beloved. Cast it down immediately, these thoughts that come. You are a blanket of love I'll use to cover many. Be free, little one. Be free. Jesus, the third soul. My beloved daughter, you are in fact my little one, but with a big heart and true desires to please me. You have no idea how I'm pleased with you, beloved one. I always look at the efforts, not the results. I've never been, nor will I ever be a result-oriented God. Did I not help Gideon every step of the way with all his doubts and unbelief to my will? But when he asked me, I came through. Did I not give Abraham the nations and generations as his inheritance, numbering them as much as the stars, simply because he believed? That is what I'm asking you to simply trust and believe. You have been sifted and will continue to be unless you believe. No, I'm not fooling you or misleading you. Yes, I remember our intimate moments when you were a child, for I handpicked you before the foundation of the earth to know me intimately. However, with that comes the lack of maturity and appreciation, which you will come to understand with the children you will take care of. As you give them your love, your words, counsel, and attention, many will not appreciate it at first, but later, by your consistency and in your absence, they will long to be in your presence because of your love. So these graces I had to take from you for a while, not only to mature you, but I did give it to many souls who are dry, in need, and at the edge. Only in heaven will you see the fruit of this tremendous suffering you're under. But I've come to bring you deliverance and breakthrough, if you will receive it. Truly, I speak in so many different ways. I've chosen now to speak to you through this vessel who cares for you deeply and desires my will first and foremost. I've brought you here to teach you the little way to show you how to love and most importantly to receive love. You too have closed off your heart under the guise of not having anything to say, but I know you have much to say. I read the thoughts of your heart. You too desire not to be hurt by others because often you're misunderstood. You only go so deep with people so that you don't get hurt, but love hurts and that is what you are afraid of, my little one. I know the pains your mother and father caused. I know the longing in your heart to truly feel love, beloved. I tell you, you are loved by me in all of heaven. Here you'll be loved. Allow others into those deep places, my little one. Allow yourself to love others. I will help you in this. Will you allow me to heal the broken places, bear with one another patiently, and love each other as the Father has loved you? Ask me of this love, and I will do it through you. Mother Mary Elijah is also wounded in different places, as she too had expectations and need she desire from you all. However, I'm teaching and showing her that she is your mother. She will carry deep in her heart and only desires my best for you. Also, mothers must correct when their child is going wayward, must nurture and love many times when things and situations seem unlovable. I am with her, in her, and I've given her my heart for you three, as she has asked. Although young in age and tiny in stature, I've made room a big room in her heart for you, and have given her my mother's wisdom and prudence. It will take time, but trust her, be patient with her, bear with her difficulties, love her and follow her leading, as she follows me, leading you into the beautiful destinies I have for you three. Remember, I choose the foolish and make them wise among men. I take all your ashes and make them beautiful. And that was the end of Jesus' message. He had me read this to the girls when I came back from prayer. First, I spoke to each individual girl privately, apologizing to two of them as I repented for my frustration and patience towards them. Then when we all got together to share our readings, I read the message, and we all cried together on each other's shoulder, repenting, asking for forgiveness from one another. I was amazed at what the Lord was doing and what he just did, as I felt a layer, a wall, a guard within all of us had broken as we knew we were in this together with Jesus, helping us and leading the way. Lord, I just thank you so much for your grace, for your wisdom, for your counsel. Thank you for truly calling, Lord God, answering our call, but when we cry out for help and trouble. Thank you for the immense grace given upon us, and thank you for these sweet, sweet souls. Continue to give me grace, Lord, how to be a mother, how to be patient, kind, and gentle, Lord. Continue to give more grace to the hiddenness of their souls and other souls who are called to come to this community, Lord. 
I pray for these two little ones, Lord. I give them back to you, Lord God, in your heart, in your arms. Continue to protect them, guide them, order and guide their steps, Lord Jesus. Heal the deep wounds of all of our hearts, Lord God, that we may be whole. Give us the grace to receive your love, Lord. Give us the grace to become love, Lord. And give us the grace to pour our love on others and on each other. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you guys for the next message.